separation of isotopes by effusion. A vessel has porous walls containing very many tiny holes. Gas molecules can pass through these holes by effusion and then be pumped off to some collecting chamber. The vessel is filled with a dilute gas consisting of two kinds of molecules which have different masses, M1 and M2, by virtue of the fact that they contain two different isotopes of the same atom. Let us, let us denote by C1 the concentration of the first type of molecules in the vessel, C2 by the concentration of the second type. The concentration is the ratio of number of molecules of type uh, I to the total number of molecules. These concentrations can be kept constant in the vessel uh, by providing a steady flow of fresh gas through it so as to replenish any gas that has effused. Let C1 prime and C2 prime denote the concentrations of the two types of molecules in the collecting chamber. What is the ratio C2 prime over C1 prime? Now uh, we have a flux of molecules that is 1 over 4 um, n p bar and let's do this for the first type of molecule so n1 v1 bar this is equal to 1 over 4 the number of molecules of type 1 divided by the total volume uh, multiplied by v1 bar and this is equal to on the other side of the hole we, we are collecting the molecules of type 1 so we have an increase per area per unit time in the number of molecules that we collect so this is instead of becoming minus 1 over adn1 dt it is plus because i'm looking at the side that is collecting these uh, molecules so if I take this equation and divide it by the total number of molecules that I call capital N, this would be equal to 1 over 4 C1 V1 bar divided by V, and then I would have 1 over NA DN1 DT on the other side. And I note that in the problem statement, it is stated C1 is a constant. So we are replenishing any gas that was lost during the effusion process. So if I rewrite this equation, 1 over 4 C1 V1 bar divided by the total volume uh, V, and I multiply it by uh, Na, uh, I multiply it by dt and here I have 1 over Na dn1 and I wait for some time uh, from t initial to t final so let's take it from time 0 to t so this is uh, from uh, 0 concentration to the final uh, value of the number of molecules and one final in the chamber at time t so or i can say it's n1 at time t this uh, because i have c1 a constant v1 bar uh, over v these are all constants that are not changing with time i have 1 over 4 c1 v1 bar over v delta t which is t is equal to 1 over n a n1 value at time t so n1 value at time t in the collecting chamber divided by n is what I call c1 prime. So this is c1 prime uh, divided by the area a. So I have found here a relationship between c1 prime and c1. c1 prime is um, a t over 4v multiplied by c1 times v1 bar so i see that uh, the ratio uh, c1 prime over c1 is controlled by v1 bar okay so c1 prime is proportional to c1 v1 bar so given that i have a certain amount of time that has passed 
So T is now a, a constant. A and divided by 4V, these are constants. So it is determined by C1 times V1 bar, uh, which does depend on the mass of the uh, isotope. And similarly, using the same arguments here, I can say C2 prime will be proportional to C2 times V2 bar. So if I take the ratio now, uh, C2 prime to C1 prime ratio, C2 prime to C1 prime ratio would be given by C2 V2 bar divided by C1 V1 bar. Now, about the dependence on mass of the uh, average speeds, so recall uh, from Maxwell speed distribution the correct value for v bar is square root uh, 8kt over pi m but anyway what you really need to remember here is that v bar is proportional to square root kt over m so using this proportionality here c2 prime divided by c1 prime would be equal to c2 divided by c1 multiplied with uh, square root kt over m2 square root m1 over kt so square root kts would cancel i have constant temperature so this gives me uh, C2 prime divided by C1 prime is equal to C2 divided by C1 and then I have M1 divided by M2 uh, to the power 1 over 2. So the concentration of molecules collected in the chamber uh, will be depending on the isotope mass and you can see here uh, due to the difference between the two masses the concentration of molecules that I collect on, on the other side of a certain type will be different from the other one. So let's uh, put some numerical values here for uh, uranium enrichment. So by using the gas UF6, one can attempt to separate uranium-235 isotope from 238 isotope. The first of these isotopes being the one useful in the initiation of nuclear fission reactions. The molecules in the vessel are then uranium-238, uh, F6, which is a 19 atomic uh, weight, and 235 version. The concentrations of these molecules corresponding to the natural abundance of these uranium isotopes are for 238 99.3% and for 235.7%. Calculate the corresponding ratio 235 to 238 concentration of the molecules collected after effusion express the result in terms of the original concentration. Now, I need to calculate the molecular uh, weights for the uh, UF6 um, for the uranium-238 isotope, uh, fluorine-619, uh, I have a 238 plus uh, 6 times 19 which is equal to 352 grams uh, per mole that's the molecular weight and for uranium 235 fluorine 619 I would have 235 plus 6 times 19 which is 349 grams per mole so 
using my result from part A, C2 prime over C1 prime, C, uh, so what I was trying to find is 235 to 238, so C235 prime divided by C238 prime will be equal to the uh, original concentration 235 divided by 238 multiplied with square root of m2 over m1 so uh, square root of the 238 version is 352 grams that's the molecular weight divided by 349 well, these masses were mass of one molecule, so you can divide the top and bottom with Avogadro's number, but that doesn't change anything. So you can find that uh, this, the answer for this would be C235 prime divided by C238 prime would be C235 divided by C238 uh, multiplied by 1.00 so you can see that the concentrations are changing as a result of the effusion process so let's summarize we are looking at the separation of isotopes by effusion uh, now first I looked at the particle flux for type 1 and type 2 molecules. For type 1 molecules, it's 1 over 4, number of molecules of type 1 divided by the volume V multiplied by the mean uh, speed uh, per molecule of type 1. Uh, this is in the collecting chamber, 1 over the area of the hole, dn1 dt, and it's positive because the number of particles in the collecting chamber are increasing. So if I take this equation and multiply with 1 over n, n1 over capital N becomes concentration and uh, n is the total number of particles, remember. Uh, and if I look at this equation and uh, take dt to the left hand side, I see that because it's mentioned in the problem c1 was kept as a constant, 1 over 4 C1, V1 bar is not time dependent, divided by V. This integral gives me just the time uh, delta T, which is T, because I've integrated from 0 to T. Initially, I had no molecules in the collecting chamber, and at time T, I have N1 uh, at time T. Uh, so I have the right-hand side integrated from 0 to N1 uh, at time T. I obtain... Uh, C1 prime divided by A on the right hand side. So I see that C1 prime is proportional to C1 times V1 bar. So given that I have allowed a time T for the molecules to effuse through these holes, uh, I would have the same constant of proportionality A T over 4V for C1 prime and C2 prime. So I find that they're just proportional to the original concentrations multiplied by the average speeds. So I recall from Maxwell speed distribution, V bar is square root 8 kT over pi m, or I can use the RMS value, square root 3 kT over m, if you wish. And in any case, V bar is proportional to square root kT over m. So when I take the ratio C2 prime over C1 prime, it is C2 over C1 multiplied by square root m1 over m2. And here is an application for uranium enrichment. Um, so what we're trying to do is uh, we're trying to separate uranium-235 from uranium-238. Uh, 238 is the most abundant one. 235 is uh, naturally 0.7%. So uh, this is uh, the first of these isotopes. Uranium-235 is the one that is useful in the initiation of nuclear fission reactions. So what we're trying to do here is uh, try to increase two uranium-235 content in the effusion process. And let's see if it works. If I calculate the molecular weights of these uranium-fluorine-6 uh, 
uh, gases for the two different types of molecules uh, and I look at the constant relative concentration at the collecting chamber I see that the 235 concentration uh, divided by 238 concentration in the collecting chamber is 1.004 times higher than that in the vessel therefore this process works we are increasing the content of uh, 235 isotope